Today, I'm excited to talk to you about Yandex or Yandex stock, Y-N-D-X stock. Uh, a friend of mine, Levium Capital on Twitter, he asked me to look at it, so I'm making it happen. Um, it's an interesting company. It's effectively a Russian tech ecosystem looking to combine the very best of several global tech companies, including Google Search or Uber ride hailing or DoorDash and Instacart and Alibaba's Tmall, Amazon Prime, AWS, Dropbox, IMDb, and Spotify. Everything, it seems like, is being included in Russia's Yandex. This is historically a very fast growing company, you know, growing over 200% in just the last few years. They were impacted slightly by COVID. And in this video, I do go through their valuation where in one upside scenario, this stock could potentially be up over 200% within a few years. Um, but that's the, that's the upside potential scenario. I'll get into that later in this video. But first, a quick plug. So my name is Daniel. You are watching Unrivaled Investing. This is a no-hype, mission-focused channel on finding you exceptional companies and unrivaled investments. If you enjoy learning about potential multi-baggers, make sure you subscribe. Multi-baggers are the types of companies that can go up hundreds or thousands of percent over time. And if you're already a subscriber, I appreciate that thumbs up. If you want to follow my personal journey to try to find these types of companies, go to unrivaledinvesting.com to see what I'm personally doing and my take on various different companies, the exclusive take on some of these companies. So what is Yandex, and there's a lot going on here in this chart, a lot, a lot of pretty colors going over here. Um, but, but from a revenue perspective, you can see it's predominantly this gray bar, which is search and portal and taxi, which is this yellow seg segment. That represents about 85% of their revenue right now. Um, but they do have several fast growing segments that we will go over in a second. Let's, let's keep going. Let's dig into the search and portal segment. It's particularly interesting because the search and portal segment represents about 100% of Yandex profits. Um, so you could see Yandex search share is around 60% of all search in Russia, which is super interesting. A very similar model to Google's AdSense, where it's you know a combination of owned and network sites. Um, and you could see over time pretty much taking share in all the key categories like Android, which which represents about 70% of Russian users. Um, desktop, about 70% of Russian search. And total Russian search has increased from 58% in 2015 to 59% in 2020. So if a stable, if not growing, um, you know, share of revenue or a share of the search market um, in Russia. So what makes Yandex more popular than Google? And look, I'm an outsider uh, stateside relative to, to Russia. So, you know, I, I this is based on me reading what other people have to say. I, I don't have a, a, a flavor, a personal flavor for Yandex versus Google. But a lot of people say it's cultural. You know, some say Yandex is better for Russia language search. You know, Yandex is more like a Yandex is more like a portal with a broader ecosystem than Google. Many similarities to Google, however. You have like the, the Yandex mail, very similar to Gmail. They use very similar coloring, I've noticed, on a lot of different apps, um, uh, very similar logos. And ultimately, Yandex is Russian and Google is not. Um, but also in this search and, and portal segment, you have Yandex Browser, which is the number two most popular browser in Russia with 30% on the desktop, 20% on mobile. And they also have, very similar to Amazon's Alexa, they have Yandex's Alice. Apparently, people like companies that start with letter A. Um, now, what about their financials? And the reality is search businesses are among the best businesses in the world because you effectively have this two-sided marketplace. If you're able to aggregate interest, like they're able to here, 60% of search, then you're gonna aggregate suppliers, people that are going to post ads. And because of that, and it's just an incredible business, you're gonna get really great growth um, because this is the place to go to for advertisers, posting you know 20% growth over time. So more and more ads, more and more searches, more and more that advertisers are willing to pay. And then you get great margins. You know, you're seeing 40, 50% EBITDA margins over time, which should translate probably to a profit margin of similar levels. You know, you'd, it's not like you have this huge CapEx that's gonna be tied to you know, running a search business, I would I would think. Um, but you could see over time, it's it's around 40, 50%. There was a slight hit to, you know, profitability in the second quarter of 2020, which is what you'd expect during the middle of a 
global crisis in the ad market, but it has started recovering since, and I, I would think that it would continue to recover and start to see similar growth rates as you've seen in prior years of, let's say, 15 to 20. Here, here it is, 20% plus. Now, what's the runway? Is there a lot of potential for search, given that this is, you know, 100% plus of their profits right now? Um, you know, the question is, is there a long runway for their search and portal business? And Russian advertising market is 0.5% of GDP. U.S. advertising is around 1% of U.S. GDP. You know, and I look at this, I see that, you know, online ad spend is about 50% of total advertising market. You know, I, I would think, you know, based on looking at historical growth rates, looking at Ad, you know, online penetration. Online sh generally does have a higher return on investment for advertisers looking at this lower percentage of GDP. You know, you could probably pencil out 10 to 15% organic growth in the years ahead. You know, the, the traditional TV advertising market is expected to grow 5%, um, traditional uh, advertising market. And so if that's growing 5%, you know, you throw in some market share, so in some pricing power. For, for you know internet advertising and so maybe 10 to 15 percent compounded you know over the next few years and so that's you know that's what I'm including when I'm looking at you know the next five years growth rate of 10 to 20 percent that's what I'm penciling out um, you can see this has historically been their largest segment I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute though um, but penciling out around 70 billion rubles in 2021 optimized margins of 40 to 50 percent which is very similar to their EBITDA margins you know there would there should be some sort of discount to the EBITDA because that includes EBITDA does include stock-based compensation so you'd want to strip strip that out strip out some sort of you know capex cost it shouldn't be that significant however um, you know apply some sort of tax rate apply some sort of multiple 20 to 30 times five years out you know this this is based on you know sort of saying look this is an incredibly lucrative company and what's the expected or segment and what's the expected growth rate in the years ahead what's really interesting is that in the upside case here you know you could effectively be buying Yandex now where you're paying for the search and portal business alone and you get everything else free you know what I'm saying is the current value of Yandex is could be fully covered in the upside case could be fully covered just by their search and portal business which is an exceptional business um, the question is what's everything else worth and so you see the taxi group which is 38 percent owned by uber um they recently sort of rebranded it to yandex go an app that includes all these different things this is a really interesting development where you have you know like yandex taxi which is very similar to uber um you know this is this is in all honesty this is beyond just russia you're looking at a, a bunch of different countries 17 different countries you know the countries like belarus or kazakhstan very nice um 800 cities but you know in response to covid they're starting to launch into other things like courier delivery cargo um, all launched in 2020, 12 different countries, 350 cities, which is, you know, sort of taps into the, the potential that you see with a company like DoorDash, which is that once you have a fleet of drivers, it's possible to start launching into other related markets. Um, they also have Yandex Drive, where people effectively rent out their cars, or you can rent out a car. Um, they have the number one by fleet size in Russia. Um, there's Yandex Eats, which reminds me very much of, of like DoorDash or Postmates. Um, you know, growing super fast, partly in response to COVID. Um, and then you also have the grocery aspect, which is kind of like Instacart of, hey, if you want 15 minute delivery of your groceries covering a 20 million uh, population, you know, 230 uh, different brands or stores, um, you know, you, you have so much under this Yandex Go, whether or not it's ride hailing, logistics, card sharing, public transportation schedules, food and grocery. Looking at this, it gets me really excited. It's interesting to see that the 38% is owned by Uber, um, but not surprising. You know, they've just had hyper growth the last few years, only recently turning profitable. So you see hyper growth, 100% plus growth the last few years. That did moderate significantly in 2020, partly due to COVID, where in the second quarter it was down to 24% growth. But even that growth during the middle of the Great Depression is 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 pretty darn good. Um, and so here it is. I would I, I should say global, you know, economic crisis or global depression, however you want to spin it. Um, but here it is. You're starting to see reacceleration. You know, nearly 60% growth in the third quarter and interesting profitability. You know, previous quarters this was 
was extremely unprofitable, um, and now you're you're sort of getting back to a nice profitable level of 11% EBITDA margins. You know, based on uh, comparable companies, you know, we we we've sort of seen that they're targeting 20 to 30%. This is comparable companies um, to their taxi group, you know, you could sort of pencil out 20 to 30% EBITDA margins. And that's sort of, you know, what I start penciling out here of 10 to 20, you know, trying to be conservative. Um, you know, what's interesting is this taxi group has, has quickly become their number one revenue segment, you know, just based on their growth rate this year and, and recent, you know, hyper growth. And so, you know, it's 64 billion rubles penciling out somewhere between 80 and let's say 100 billion rubles 2021. Um, here's the implied margins of 20 to 10 to 20 percent. What's the growth rate over the next five years? Trying to put a range 25 to 35 percent. This range might be higher, might be lower. Um, assume multiple, let's say 25 to 35 times. Part of this, you know, is a little bit higher just because there's a good chance they're still growing at a nice clip five years from now. Well, what's interesting is when you take the end valuation here of their taxi segment, add it to search segment, and you could see that relative to the current market cap, on the high side, just adding these two segments would imply 100% upside without including any other businesses other than search and taxi. And they do have several other assets. And so what else is Yandex? And the answer is a lot. So they have a classified segment, which includes cars, 37 million users per month, 750,000 listings. They have real estate, they have jobs. As we know from other comparable companies, these businesses can be cash cows over time. So far, we're not really seeing that um, for the most part where it's been low single digit EBITDA, negative EBITDA margin here, break, you know, effectively break even. Only recently did they post, you know, a 30% profit margin but even that isn't you know hasn't been sustainable um so i'm curious to see if you know if if that becomes sustainable over time that said they have posted some very nice growth you know 58 81 45 so you know these types of growth rates make me think they're taking share or developing a market over time so this is this you know if you are taking share and developing a market there is that potential to be a much bigger player over time uh and have very lucrative margins but there's there's even more. You have this media segment, which is Yandex Music, Kino Poisik, um, the largest Russian language source for information about movies, TV shows, celebrity, yada yada yada. It's it's really like IMDb on steroids because you can not only like learn about your TV shows, but it's also ability to like stream thousands of movies and TV shows, and then you can also buy tickets. They also have this other service where you can buy tickets for theaters and concerts. Then Studio, where it's about investing in creating video and music content. So there, the, Yandex is just all over the place, and there's even more. So there's, you know, so here actually is is their segment. Um, I'll get into that. Sorry, I was hyping it up about what's what's beyond media, but there is more. Um, so you can see media has been growing very fast, 100% growth in 2019. That's it, extremely unprofitable. So it is sort of tricky to pencil out what the right margin is for this over time. So I, I'm probably going to put in a conservative range for this, but still look growing very fast, 92% growth, even in the third quarter of 2020. Um, so when you look at now, now you're, we've gone from media to e-commerce. That's what sells. Um, in 2020, Yandex completed a deal with Cyberbank, a Russia state owned bank, um, for assets of Yandex market where they're acquiring this 45% interest that Cyberbank owned also while swapping this 25% interest that Yandex owned of Yandex money back to Cyberbank. Honestly, when you're looking at an authoritarian government that that has interests, you know, all over the place, you never know if you're getting a fair deal. Sometimes it's just, you know, you make an offer that they can't refuse and you have to take it. So I, I suspect, you know, there, there probably is elements of that as, you know, Yandex is buying Yandex market for 40 till 42 billion rubles while selling Yandex money for 2.4 billion rubles to, to Cyberbank. Um, so this is how it's currently looking um, post post the reorg where now Yandex owns, you know, effectively the majority and Cyberbank owns Yandex money. So what happened with this merger? Well, Yandex market was previously just a price comparison site that wasn't growing that fast. You know, 2017 to 2020, 30, 37% daily average user growth. That implies around 10%, you know, teens level compounding, which for a nascent market, you know, isn't that impressive. 
but they are sort of tapping into this e-commerce marketplace with first person or first party and third party sales. In this case, third party sales of 56%. So this reminds me of, of sort of Tmall bringing in third parties that are selling on your marketplace. You get a cut, you, you help them advertise their goods and, and you get a percentage of whatever set goes through your platform. Um, and you know, this is very early days in terms of their e-commerce segment, I would say. But, you know, their marketplace, you know, uh, gross market value that's going across their platform grew by 2.8 times year over year in first quarter and grew by 3.6 times in the second quarter. So this is a hyper growth segment that they got into, you know, 130,000 items delivered per day, you know, 45 billion run rate in terms of rubles. The question is, is there potential for this to be much bigger over time? And, and you are sort of talk, talking about this hyper growth platform. And look, Russia is, is a is is really small relative to the rest of the countries in terms of e-commerce penetration. So there is this great potential over time for what they could do. You know, Russia six percent versus China at thirty six, and this was twenty nineteen. You know, COVID probably accelerated some of these figures. You know, they were. You know, Yandex talks about the e-commerce market being one point nine trillion rubles, which is definitely huge potential over time. Um, but the the big challenge is that they are competing against several competitors that are many, many multiples of their size, like Wildberries, Ozone, and AliExpress. The question is, do they have what it takes to catch up? And their goal is to become a top three player. So this this does reflect that it's very rivaled. It's going to be tough for them to compete um, when their aspirations is just to become a top three player. That means, hey, if we could be number three, that would be great in the next three years. Get to five million stock keeping units and achieve break even. So they're going to be investing heavily to sort of become a contender. I could have been a contender. Um, so that's that's their goal here. Um, and how are they going to do it? They're saying deeper integration with the Yandex ecosystem. And let me let me change my view real quick. So how could they potentially achieve you know becoming a top player? Um, and here's where it gets really interesting because this is sort of like what Google could have been. Um, in, a, in a different, you know, hypothetical universe, because it shows how Yandex is trying to bring this marketplace and, you know, interweave it into all these aspects like Yandex search, which makes sense. I mean, like e-commerce is a direct fit with search. Um, last mile delivery using voice with Alice, um, effectively their eats, um, using maps where it's like, hey, when you go on a map to look for something, oh, you could see this e-commerce advertising. They also have Yandex Plus, which I'll get into in just a second. They have these like news feeds, which includes Yandex Zen. Um, so like this this is the, the big brother that could have happened with Google. I'd argue that this is a much stronger position than Google has in any given market just because it has so many of these different services. It's interesting how Yandex Plus is, is like this super membership where you're, you're, it's, I, I, I think of it sort of as like a crazy Amazon Prime, maybe not with the delivery benefits, but with all these others, like um, you pay a couple of bucks a month, like two, two to four bucks a month, um, and you're getting you know ad-free films and TV on Kino Poisic, 7,500 movies, a full subscription to Yandex Music, unlimited downloads, 10% cash back on Yandex Taxi and the different types of taxi rides, 10% 10, 10 cash back on tickets bought except for movie tickets, 5% back on Drive, 5% cash back on market purchases. So they're, they're trying to create this super subscription that sort of flows into a discount for everything. And for a few bucks a month, you're getting access to the whole Yandex ecosystem. They're really leaning in on in terms of developing this, this really interesting ecosystem where everything's sort of connected shipping search e-commerce oh and there's even more um where you, they have a self-driving group it, who, who doesn't have a self-driving group these days it seems like I, every day it seems like there's a new ipo or spac for a self-driving you know company um they have zen which i mentioned previously that is 18 million daily active users 40 minutes of time spent daily so this is an app that people like to use this this gets to sort of the portal aspect where people are just using yandex properties to go online then they have Yandex Cloud, which is trying to compete with the likes of like AWS, but except for Russian assets or Russian you know, companies, where 35% of the revenue is platform as a service, three local data centers. So, so many bets and more, where they have Yandex Education, postgraduate education professional 
retraining in the IT sphere, Yandex School, Yandex Lyceum. Oh my gosh, I'm running out of breath over here. They have so many different Yandex Maps, Yandex Fuel, a contactless payment service at gas stations built into the geoservices apps with 7,300 fueling stations connected by the end of 2020. Yandex Routing. There is so much more and, and even more. So here's here's looking at their 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 financials for other bets. Um, you can see it's just grown super duper fast. 86% growth in 2019, still growing very fast in 2020. 50% growth in 2020. That said, is very unprofitable, negative 60%. So I'd I'd probably put a big discount on this one. Um, but just putting this all together, and this is part of my value proposition to you, is I put you know, this sheet available for you to play with, you know, you can click on the description of this video, you can play around with it. But just based on this, it actually is a very interesting risk reward, um, where I'm penciling out, you know, over 200% upside in the upside scenario. Um, I'm not calling out any of the macro risks here. I'm sort of valuing this as saying, hey, let's think about those macro risks separately. I'll talk about that in my exclusive video just for Journey subscribers in one second. Um, but, but by and large, the risk reward looking at this is search and taxi or about half the value and then you have these other plays where you could have something like e-commerce and this is a wide range, you know, 300 billion rubles to 900 billion rubles. It's a wide range, but it's a wide range of possibilities. You know, is it still gonna be significantly unprofitable? Will they be a number three player? Whereas you do see, you know, they are starting to dominate the market in their these first two segments. But it's just amazing looking at all these different segments that they own. This is sort of like what Google could have been um, if they like acquired Amazon and just went crazy. Like it's, it's really amazing and interesting like why this is even being enabled. And I'll get into that also in my exclusive video, but by and large, like seems like very reasonable risk reward X any sort of macro factors. And so I'm not gonna talk about that here but if you want to know, like, am I buying, I think you know what my answer is going to be, which is that you have to go to unravelinvesting.com, click on Journey. I will post an exclusive analysis of Yandex in the comments below, so you can click on that if you want to follow along or follow my subsequent thoughts on this. But I, there's a lot more to Unravel Investing Journey just, be, just beyond exclusive content. Um, there's also an educational series, you know, which I'm rolling out, like, how to, you know, what's the optimal betting strategy, the, the billion dollar secret behind the optimal betting strategy that most investors don't know about. Um, also, uh, how to value stocks, as well as my goal that each month for journey subscribers, this is a journey. This is not a day trade, this is a journey. I'm looking out over months and years, maybe even decades. This is my my journey that I'm sharing with where I'm, I'm looking to find multi-baggers. So each month, try to find a multi-bagger that can be part of my multi-year journey. And so if that sounds like something interesting to you, you know, go to unravelinvesting.com. You can see a full catalog of content that I post below and just finding one potential multi-bagger can change your life journey. So if you're interested in following my journey, go to unravelinvesting.com. By the way, I just posted a stock that I recently bought for myself that I think could have 5X potential. So I'm very excited about that. You'd have to check it out on unravelinvesting.com. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, learning about Yandex or YNDX stock, please make a point of subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, I appreciate that thumbs up and thank you so much for watching.